Hi everyone, welcome to this new video uh, about a very important topic, which is cloud security architecture, and specifically within that, the zero trust model. Uh, now, this is a topic uh, like I think it's very important, and a lot of confusion is also there with regards to this topic. Like, what exactly is the zero trust model? You will see a lot of people talking about it. Uh, a lot of vendors are selling money, like selling products and making money of this our product has zero trust and we are selling zero trust and all that so i thought it would be a good idea to just talk about this particular topic uh, about cloud security architecture and the zero trust model like how what it is and how what it means exactly so uh, guys before we begin please do subscribe to my channel and like this video so you get notified and it will help this channel to grow more and spread awareness about ai and cloud security and cyber security careers and all that thank you for that okay so guys so first of all so if you have this expression, I used to have this expression whenever somebody used to mention zero trust, which is great, another product to implement. And a lot of people do think like that. So first of all, the most important thing, uh, zero trust is not a product, okay? It is a concept. It's not like a, something you buy and implement. Any vendor that comes to you and says, I'm gonna implement zero trust for you, just buy my product and you'll have zero trust. Believe me, that's not true. It is, a, it is not a product, it is a concept which you implement. So what is it? Like the name says, it, it gives you like a, it's a way of doing stuff, okay? So let's start with what the definition means, right? Zero trust. So it's a model and a way of mechanisms that focuses on providing security and controls that don't rely on your traditional like network controls. So what does the zero and zero trust means? It means that you do not put any trust on where the user is coming from within your network or outside your network. Traditionally, uh, even today, like users which are within your network, they are always considered to be more trusted then somebody coming from outside or somewhere like a partner or something like that, right? In a zero trust model, your network centric, your network boundaries and trust models, they are replaced by other techniques and you focus more on the identity. Like everything is an identity in the cloud, right? Your computer, your ID, your call and API call, everything is linked to an ID, okay? So you focus your security on that. Basically your identity becomes a firewall, okay? And basically every request that is going, you look at it, what's the, where is it coming from? Or what's the time? What's the risk rovers of this ID? And based on that, you basically implement zero trust. So, okay, now that we have a basic idea of this, why? What is this? Like, why are we implementing this even? So, basically, security remains the same. You know, your mission is to keep, like, bad actors out and your assets safe. But with a fresh, you know, strategic uh, look at it. So, the ID environments used to be complex, right? Uh, you can take a look at this. So ID environments used to be complex since the early days. You had many identities, many devices, interactions. So we tried the old trusted networks way. We, like you have a security parameter and it's protected. But what happened was attacks, attacks started to emerge. Like, uh, oh, so you, you, we had this perimeter and it's, it worked at lock, but it didn't hold up over time. Now we had mobile devices, Wi-Fi, cloud services, remote productivity. Last two years, everything has been worked from home, right? So security threats have expanded into a full spectrum of attackers. And now you have new and new ways to coming around this network boundary. So this network boundary has been eroded away. So it's 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 failed to meet, meet the strategic needs of the organization. So now what do you need? You need to you need a way to prioritize and have security, but meet the needs of the organization. So this strategy is called zero trust. Okay. This is from the Microsoft cybersecurity reference architecture. I would definitely advise you to take a look at it. It's really excellent in the way it explains zero trust. All the cloud providers have this, but I think they just uh, explain it in a much better way. So, and now, now that you understand, so let's take a look. This is what the classic approach used to be, right? Everything you have restricted to a secure network. And in zero trust, what it is, it doesn't matter where the device is. It does not matter where your data users, application APIs are coming from. You're going to enforce them on a secure network, right? You're gonna uh, force them to be secure wherever they are. So basically the role of security changes instead of something restricting business, you're gonna enable business. So this is like the most uh, best example I can tell you about uh, zero trust, how, how it is, how it works and how it's different from your traditional way of doing security. So yeah, this is how your typical flat network used to be, right? I mean, there'll be differences a little bit, but this is traditionally how your uh, security strategy and how like you evolve towards uh, zero trust. So this is based on my organizations. A lot of organizations follow this, honestly. So in the beginning, you have firewalls, right? You have in in ingress, egress, and other like things like IDS, IPS, proxies. And within the, within the network, you don't have that much segmentation. You'll have a little bit, but not that much, honestly. But what happens with this? Like you have great productivity within the network, 
but it creates a lot of risk with a single compromised device. Like some device gets compromised, right? It can readily compromise other devices and you can have like uh, credentials being stolen and lateral traversal, you know, lateral movement by this architecture. So low impact risks will happen, but they can rapidly become like a major incident for many organizations. And this slide is slowly started to go away as uh, more and more devices and more and more work from home used to happen, partners joining in, a lot of things happening. This thing used to go away now. So now you, you, you want to slowly evolve towards zero trust. So this is now what you're looking at, right? So the first priority of zero trust is to, you want to reduce risk and you want to don't want to trust anything. It doesn't matter where it's coming within or outside the network. You want to validate the user. You want to validate the device before allowing access to any uh, access to any data. And this is where your mind shift comes in. So users, you, you're not going to trust a device simply because they're connected to your network, right? They must pr prove that they are safe with some metadata, which goes along with every request. Okay. So considering your devices within the network, you're going to check at its policy. Is it validated? Is it safe? Uh, same thing with something coming outside, like a work from home thing. Okay, you have managed devices, unmanaged net devices. All of them will be authenticating to a central policy. This does not happen overnight, obviously, because it's a massive change in how you're looking at it, right? You can have unmanaged internet, which people want access to, but it's, which is fully open. There are no restrictions on that. But then anytime this, uh, this device is going to connect to your assets, you're going to validate it. You're going to make sure everything is like uh, fully authenticated because you... Uh, you, you you want to put those controls in, okay? So let's say you, you can have mobile devices, you can have personal devices, so you can have virtual desktops, all of them will be authenticating. So where are we moving towards? Now you've started authenticating everything, right? And what's the end state? What are you going to reach exactly? So this is the zero trust end state, which we call like the best of both worlds, right? You can have a segregation of like resources, identities, but all of them are authenticating to a single uh, access control policy. So you, like I said, your identity is becoming the firewall, right? And you're going to have different trust level, different management levels, right? This is the ideal end state. All your access decisions uh, focus are based on like the user's, user security and it really enhances the user experience. So the main thing is the adaptive access control. It makes its decisions based on a consistent policy and it, it checks the context of each request. It checks where is it coming from? What's the time? What's the location? What's the device state? What's the sensitivity? So intelligent decisions are being made. It's not that, okay, if it's from the network, allow everything. It's outside the network. No, I have to like really check this out. So you completely do away. Like I said, this is what your ideal state would be. So this is guys in a nutshell, this is what zero trust is. You can have similar concepts in Google, AWS. Uh, this I just took an example of Microsoft because they already ha had all this, uh, what do you call documented. So it would be much easier to understand. So, okay, what if uh, you want to do an assessment today? You want to find out, okay, I like zero trust. Where do I stand today? So the good thing is they have an excellent, like a free assessment you can do. It just asks a little bit of questions and it tells you, okay, guys, this is where you stand as of today. It's going to ask you questions about your identity, about your MFA, what sort of things are you doing? What sort of security practices you have? And based on that, it's going to give you some very nice solutions. So I would definitely suggest going there and doing this assessment and it really help you out, okay? If you want to learn more, guys, there are many, many resources present. You have the Open Group Security Forum. So they have some very nice zero trust commandments and principles. NIST has a very excellent example. You have things from AWS, Google, and Microsoft also. So whichever, like I said, it is not a product. Please take that away from your mind. It is a concept which you implement and it's slowly, slowly, it will happen over time. Don't think you can implement a product and you will have zero trust. That not happen, I assure you. So I hope you find this useful, guys. Uh, please do subscribe to this channel so you get notified of new videos. And I wish you all the best in your zero trust journey. Thank you.